Welcome back, guys. Anime Scale here, and today we have Kakashi's Top 20 Strongest Jutsu. I think we can all agree that Kakashi is easily one of the coolest characters in the show. When we first met him, lots of people mentioned he was famous for learning 1,000 different jutsu. We never got to see most of those, but we still saw enough to make a Top 20 list. As always, this list boils down to personal opinion in the end. Also, keep in mind that we're going to be ranking these not just on power, but based on how important they were to Kakashi in the story. Now, let's get into it. As we've talked about before, the summoning jutsu is amazing because it lets you bring in anything you've made a contract with to help you out of a tough situation. This can get pretty ridiculous with people like Madara and Obito being able to summon the Nine Tails. Unfortunately, you can't really summon something you don't have a contract with, and even then you need to put in a lot of chakra to get a powerful summon. Which brings us to Kakashi. While Naruto is busy summoning Gamabunta to fight with the One Tails, Kakashi is using it to summon a bunch of small dogs. I mean, sure, they're apparently really good for tracking, but it's still kind of a letdown. You can't really put this jutsu anywhere but on the last place on this list. I mean, the name kind of says everything that needs to be said here. The user can burrow underneath the ground and pop up pretty much wherever they want. This jutsu could let someone escape from a bad fight or get a drop on someone. All in all, it's pretty versatile, even if it looks a little silly. Kakashi used this jutsu to surprise Itachi, and on that occasion, it didn't do much because he's, well, Itachi. But it was successful against Obito in combination with another jutsu that will come up later down this list. Moving on to the 18th spot, we have the Primary Lotus, which is probably one of the coolest looking taijutsu in the entire series. After opening the first gates, the user can grab someone from the air and pile drive them headfirst into the ground. Most ninja definitely are not going to shrug something like that off. The most memorable use of this was obviously the time Lee used it against Gara, who only survived thanks to his sand armor. Kakashi can use the technique too, and in Shippuden, he used it against Naruto and Sakura, and even managed to pull this off against Kakazu. It definitely deserves a spot here. This is probably one of the strongest water-style jutsu we see in the entire series, and is used by none other than Kasami. The user uses surrounding water to throw a giant water shark at their enemy. Since it's the kind of thing Kisama uses, you can be sure it's probably above your average ninja's pay grade. Kakashi only learned it by copying it from Kisame, and when he used it, his jutsu was strong enough to cancel out Kisame's, which says everything that needs to be said, just how strong this is. The Sharingan pretty much gives anyone a cheat code when it comes to Genjutsu. Not only is using any Genjutsu against someone with the Sharingan a bad idea, they can also use it to put you in a Genjutsu too. We all know how ridiculous it can get with things like the Tsukiyomi and the Kotomatsukami, but the base Sharingan is no joke either. The most famous time Kakashi used this was right at the start of the series, the first time he tested Team 7. He showed Sakura a vision of her precious Sasuke not having the best time. For a more serious example, he used Genjutsu against Zabuza too, and it came in more than handy. This definitely earns a place here. The Lightning Clone is, well, a clone made out of lightning. The special thing about the Lightning Clone, though, is that damaging it is going to electrocute the person closest to it. This might not seem very useful until we start remembering the kinds of people this was useful against in the series. Not only did Kakashi use this in his fight against Pain, he also used it in his legendary fight against Obito. So this jutsu has made an appearance in most of Kakashi's iconic fights. Against Obito, this jutsu even temporarily stunned him, which is no small feat considering this Obito was already way beyond Kage level at this point. Like the name suggests, the Earth Star Wall is pretty much just making a giant wall pop out of the Earth. You can obviously use it to protect yourself, like how Kakashi used it against Obito's fireball in Shippuden. You can also use it more aggressively, like Kakashi using it to block off one of the paths of pain. What makes this jutsu really cool, though, is that its size depends on the person using it. Not bad for a seemingly simple technique. Oh, and for some reason, Kakashi's wall has these sculptures of his summoned dogs on it. I don't really know why, but it definitely looks cool. Look, sharks are cool and all, but what's better than a shark? A dragon. 
Yup, this Jutsu probably doesn't pack quite as big a punch as the Water Shark technique, but it definitely makes up for it all in style. Besides just looking cool, this Jutsu comes in at a pretty important point in the story. Kakashi learned this technique fighting off against Zabuza, showing off not only how cool his Sharingan was, but how cool Jutsu in Naruto could be. Just like the last entry, this Jutsu was also first shown in Kakashi's Square Off against Zabuza. What makes this take a slightly higher spot though, is just the sheer scale of the thing. Up until this point, this was easily the most crazy looking technique in the entire show, and it packed a punch. This was more than strong enough to blast Zabuza a good bit away, as well as flooding everything in the surrounding area. Sadly, it's not really something that gets used a lot, but it definitely still makes it onto this list. The Fireball Jutsu might not have felt like it, but it was probably one of the more memorable techniques in the show. Not only is pretty much any Uchiha worth his salt supposed to be able to do this, Kakashi also used the technique at some pretty important moments. The best example I can think of is when he used it against Naruto and Sakura after the time skip to test them. The Fireball Jutsu Kakashi used was huge, and it was a compliment to their growth that Naruto and Sakura survived the thing. Number 10, Lightning Beast Tracking Fang. Now we're finally getting into the kinds of jutsu we all know Kakashi for, lightning techniques. This is definitely the coolest looking technique on the list so far, materializing a large lightning dog that runs straight at the enemy. It's also no joke since Kakashi was confident enough in it to use it in his fight against Pain. There, Pain thought it was dangerous enough to protect his diva pa from getting hit by the thing. If Kakashi had used it earlier in the series, it probably would have gotten a lot more work done. A jutsu created by Sasuke Uchiha, the Chidori current is pretty much just a longer range version of the iconic Chidori, with the user being able to zap anyone around him. What this jutsu gives up in a raw strength, it makes up for in versatility. Not only does it allow someone to take out multiple people at once, it also serves as a pretty solid defense. I doubt charging at anyone emitting lightning everywhere is a good idea for most ninja. The Rasengan is pretty much one of the most powerful and memorable jutsu in the entire show. We've talked about this on the channel before, but basically what makes this thing stand out is that it's not only powerful, it's a rite of passage. There are only ever a handful of people who can use the thing, and that just adds to its cool factor. We don't really need to talk too much about how strong it is. There's a reason Naruto can't stop himself from spamming the thing any chance he gets. The only reason this technique isn't any higher on this list is because it isn't that important to Kakashi. Sure, he's used it a couple of times in the show, but this isn't something he relies on too much. That honor goes too. Chidori. The Chidori is definitely what Kakashi is more well known for. The Chidori is what happens when you try to make a lightning chakra Rasengan and mess up. It's not really much of a failure though, considering this thing is ridiculous. There's a reason the Chidori is known as more of an assassination technique than a ninjutsu. Yes, this technique is going to one-shot anybody who takes a direct hit from it, unless they're way stronger than your average ninja. There's a good reason Sasuke never stopped using it, after he learned it from Kakashi. Still, as the jutsu's creator, the Chidori definitely deserves a high spot on this list. Now we're getting to the point where Kakashi's jutsu are really starting to pack a punch, and the lightning transmission is no different. This is pretty much another variation of the Chidori. Using a shadow clone, Kakashi and his clone can make two different Chidoris with a thin blade of lightning connecting the two. They can run them straight through anyone, cutting them in half. What makes this really useful is that not only can it take out several people at once, like the Chidori current, but it's just as strong as the regular Chidori. Using this, Kakashi and his shadow clone were able to cut through multiple tail beast chakra arms during the war, which is no small feat. The Chidori was something made up by a young Kakashi and something he could only use because he had the Sharingan. The Purple Lightning is a technique made by Kakashi years later, after he'd lost the Sharingan to make up for the fact that he couldn't use the Chidori anymore. That might make you think this new technique might be weaker than the Lightning Cutter, but you'd be wrong. Not only can you use it everywhere you could use the Chidori, Kakashi prefers using it from a distance, striking people with bolts of electricity. This attack is just as strong as it would be ramming it into someone, thus making up for the Chidori's biggest weakness. 
Now we're at the point where Kakashi's techniques are pretty much going to instantly kill anyone they hit, unless they're equally ridiculous. The left eye Kamui allows Kakashi to send something to a pocket dimension. This might not seem that strong until you realize that Kakashi can use this to safely sever someone's head and send that to another dimension too. The weakness here is that Kakashi does still have to aim the thing, but that's something he gets better at over the course of the series. In the war, Kakashi had gotten so good with it that he was confident he could sever off most of the ten tails at once if he had the chakra to do so. This shows off that the only thing saving anyone from this jutsu is that they can dodge it. Using this technique and some help from Naruto, Kakashi even helped to land a hit on Obito, and we all know how hard that is. Obito. If having the Kanwi of one of Obito's eyes was so strong, you can imagine how broken it would be to have the full version. Obito was someone who'd only got hit like two times before the war started, and that was with just half of his dojutsu. With both eyes, Kakashi is pretty much one of the strongest people in the world, right up there with Naruto and Sasuke. In fact, with the complete dojutsu and some six paths chakra, Kakashi can access a perfect Sisano. That is even stronger than Sasuke's. And not only that, Kakashi can do everything that Obito could, so it's already pretty much impossible to hit him, since he'll just laugh at you from a different dimension. Not only that, but having both eyes negates the one tiny weakness that Obito had. In fact, Obito had to materialize his body if he wanted to attack anything. If you could use that one tiny moment to land a hit on him, it would go through. That's the only reason the fourth Hokage was able to injure Obito at all. With both eyes, not only can Kakashi be intangible, but he can also use his other eye to warp away your head while you can't do anything to him. If Obito had both of his eyes, well, I doubt he'd have thought being the Ten Tails Jinchuriki would be much of an upgrade. At this point, Kakashi is fighting and holding his own against someone like Kaguya, so you can be sure that Kakashi instantly kills literally everyone on the planet besides Naruto and Sasuke. The Kanwi Raikiri is what you get when you combine Kanwi's broken abilities with the raw offensive power of the Raikiri. Basically, Kakashi can use both of his to make a jutsu that's completely uncounterable. Even the last form had the one drawback of Kakashi still needing to aim if he wanted to warp away your head. Using the Kanwi Raikiri, Kakashi can move through a person while keeping only his hand tangible. You might think the weakness is that you can attack the hand, except the hand is coated in the Raikiri, one of the strongest jutsu in the whole show. The move is even more of an instant kill than the last one because it's a lot harder to dodge. Using this, Kakashi was able to cut up a chunk of Kaguya herself. This wasn't like Kaguya was struggling to avoid the thing or anything either. There was literally nothing she could do against this technique. I don't think I need to tell you how everyone else would handle this deadly jutsu. Finally, the number one is the Kamui Shuriken. Now we've gotten to the very end of Kakashi's ridiculous jutsu arsenal, and it's none other than the Kamui Shuriken. This is beyond the point of overkill. The Kamui Shuriken is pretty much Kakashi throwing out giant shuriken from his Sisano. On contact, these shuriken warp anything they hit into a pocket dimension. Basically, all of these techniques are trying to abuse Kamui as hard as they can, and this one takes the cake. At least with Kamui Raikiri, Kakashi could only take out one opponent at a time. With this technique, there's nothing stopping Kakashi from instantly destroying whole villages and armies if he really felt like it. I don't think there can be anything stronger than an instant kill move that's also almost impossible to dodge. Just like the last few entries, this is also something Kakashi only used against Kaguya. Thankfully for just about everyone in the world, Kakashi lost his Kamui abilities after the war. Kamui is something so hilariously broken that I wouldn't be surprised if it even gave Jigen a run for his money, and Kamui Shuriken is definitely where it got the most crazy. Thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. As always, this list is just my personal opinion, and if I missed out on someone's favorite Kakashi Jutsu along the way, make sure you leave your top 20 down in the comments below. This is all for now. I'll see you guys soon. Anime Scale out. Bye.